our last story, we take you into the world of Rashid Diab, who with every stroke of his brush, tries to promote different aspects of Sudanese culture. Vibrant reds, calming blues, cool greens and glowing yellows. Just a few of the hundreds of colours created by the hands of one man in his quest to put culture on the map of Sudan. Entering the world of Dr. Rashid Diab, one is instantly hit by a wave of tranquility. The high-pitched sound of the birds as they circle the manicured gardens drowns out the irritating hum of the tuk-tuks outside. You have to conserve the environment. Born in 1957 in Wad Madani, some 200 kilometers south of Khartoum, Diab shared memories of his childhood with us. I was born in a small place, but big in its uh, importance for me. It was this, like a place where I, I found everything I want as a child. Since Dr. Diab was very young, he knew he was different from other people of his Sudanese culture. He had a feeling even then that he wanted to change things. I noticed that I'm an artist, not a painter, because I, f I felt that things mean something to me. Whatever I see, whatever I find, whatever I touch, I wanted to be in a very different way. So I started to work with clay, making forms of animals. But Diab felt a void in his life. At that time, there is no any interest. There is no any art uh, education uh, or galleries or whatever. But to some extent, it's much better than now. At least at the school, primary school and Bender school, I had a, a st we had colors, and we have a, 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 a class where we study art, but not. Uh, like an appreciated uh, subject. And so in 1979, after receiving a bachelor's degree in painting from Cartoons College of Fine Art, Diab won a scholarship that would take him to Spain's capital, Madrid, where he studied fine art. After a long absence from Sudan, in 1999, Diab brought his canvases home. Proud of his culture and heritage, Diab says he came back to try and bring awareness to the richness of Sudan's culture and art. I came to, to announce a revolution in art. It's against two things, as I told you before. That's against uh, uh, visual literacy, illiteracy and uh, cultural contamination. If I could do anything, I can change anything in these two fields, Sudan will change a lot. From the 200,000 US dollars he made in selling his property in Spain, Diab purchased a plot of land in Sudan's capital Khartoum and began building the Rashid Diab Art Center. By July 2005, the center officially opened its doors to anyone with an interest in art. People can come and show Diab their art, he will assess it and give gifts of watercolors to encourage them to continue. It's like an oasis for him, where a place he finds artists and find material. And this is one of the uh, aims of the center, to help any, any, any talented artist from any, any age is welcome here. The center has so much to offer, not just to artists. But in this one, it attracts school children on field trips. These children are from Khartoum's Purple Crayon International School. They are studying a topic on feelings and how to express themselves through art. Through art, they can all have a way of using colour and different styles and techniques to um, experiment and try and show what they're feeling. And I think for a lot of the children, particularly in this class where um, there are lots of different abilities, um, many of them it becomes a good way to show what they're feeling and they can actually do something good that they feel proud of and achieve at the end. Diab not only wants to show the richness of Sudanese art to the world, he wants to conserve the roots of its people. This is the project of my life, that the Sudan has more than 50, 100 tribes should be represented in the big, biggest, biggest museum ever in the world. So if you can imagine a place with 500 rooms, each, each tribe in one room with the environmental 
sites and everything, instrument, artifacts and, and music and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dream, big dream. This is, this is the richness of Sudan, this is the wealth of Sudan. Diab's paintings evoke the tragedies of famine and war in his country. But he hopes that they'll bring new energy and optimism to his countrymen. He has three themes on which he bases his artwork. The Nile, the desert and women. Apart from exhibiting his own work, the center also offers international and Sudanese artists free space to exhibit their work. There are five villas that can accommodate up to 12 artists at any time. Some are workshops to students at an average price of 3,000 US dollars. And a weekly open forum which has now attracted more than 600 people a week. People who have traveled some hundreds of kilometers to attend not only a cultural evening providing music and dance, but where citizens can speak freely about any issue including national security and the rights of women and so on. In spite of no backing, financial or other, from the government of Sudan, Diab sustains the centre by continuing to sell his artwork through exhibits around the globe and charges artists who stay at the centre some 100 US dollars per day to cover their basic costs. Diab employs 12 staff who share his dream and perseverance in their plight to encourage fellow Sudanese to be aware of the deep, rich culture of their country. When I, I leave this world, I will leave very good people to work for Sudan and to give this message to others that Sudan has to be built by Sudanese and Sudan has to be changed by the Sudanese through culture.